Hello once again and welcome for another Bible study. Today is Wednesday and so we're continuing to follow our uh, our Savior in this last week of his earthly ministry. And so today we uh, we look at John chapter number 12 and being Wednesday we uh, had our prayer meeting in a previous video. So if this is the first video you're watching today just know that we've already had our prayer meeting and, uh, and so you can go find that video either right now and come back to this one uh, or you can wait till uh, till after the Bible study and then go back and, uh, and join us for our prayer meeting. But I would encourage you to do that as well. John chapter number 12, and we'll be looking at two parallel passages here, Mark 14 and John chapter number 12, and, uh, and so that we can have a, a well-rounded understanding of what is taking place here Wednesday in this week for our for our Savior is uh, is a little bit of a uh, of a slow day. I believe he kind of slows things down a little bit um, to to prepare himself. He knows what is about to happen. He knows what is about to take place. He's this is this doesn't catch him by surprise at all. And uh, so I believe he separates himself for just a for for a little bit on this day to prepare himself. He knows that tomorrow will be Passover. And, uh, and he knows all the preparations that need to be made. So I believe he takes himself uh, and, and withdraws a little bit so that he can prepare himself physically, mentally, spiritually for the next couple of days. Um, and so this is very, very important for us to understand uh, this. So let's look here, John chapter number 12. The Bible says, starting in verse number one, he says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which he had, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Uh, there, there they made him a supper, and uh, Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then Mary, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Of this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the bag and bear, that was, and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my bearing hath she kept this, for the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Father, I thank you so much for your word, and I pray that today you would help us, give us wisdom and understanding as we look into your word here these next few moments. Lord, I desperately need your help. I need your wisdom. I need the filling of your Holy Spirit for the teaching and preaching of your word for this hour. Lord, I pray that you would meet with us in a, in a very real and, and very special way today. I pray, Lord, that we would yield ourselves to you, that we would humble our hearts before you, and that we would discern what you would, uh, what you were, what you're asking of us uh, in our lives. Well, Lord, we love you. We pray that you would, um, again, Lord, we pray that you'd meet with us today in a, in a very real way. We pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right. Now, some of you might be thinking, doing doing a little math here, and saying, "Okay, I see verse number one. He says this is six days before the Passover." Um, but when we go to Mark 14, we'll understand this. This is uh, the, Jesus came to Bethany and stayed in the house of Mar uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And, um, and so these are very dear friends. He kind of made this his home base as, as, uh, as he was there for this last final week of his life. Okay, and, uh, and so though it mentions six days that he went to Bethany, this particular... Um, account takes place a couple days later in John 4, or excuse me, in Mark chapter 14. I'll just read it for you. We'll stay here in John for just a little bit. In Mark 14, he says, after two days was the, was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. Uh, and so then he moves on with him being in Bethany, and then this account takes place. All right, now we will go to Mark 14, but uh, after a few minutes, I'll, I'll let you know when. We, we want to look at John chapter 12, because there are some very important things that we need to learn here. The, this honestly, if if we're correct, now let's, just to, just to be honest, it doesn't really matter if we're correct about which day Jesus did, did what, okay? It um, doesn't really matter too much. If God really wanted us to know, he would say it was Wednesday, 
and then we would know. Um, and he's given us plenty to uh, to discern and to know closely enough uh, that these that these things are taking place. But this is so very important. There's so many things, and I, this, this is probably one of the only things that Jesus did uh, or that, that happened that took place on this day, on Wednesday. Um, Mary and Martha and Lazarus all there together and uh, make a feast, and uh, they make this, this big dinner, and then Mary brings this, uh, this pound of, of ointment, and she anoints Jesus' feet. And so um, we, as we read through John chapter number 11, Mary's sister Martha, Martha was the one with the confidence to know that Lazarus would be raised from the dead in the resurrection day by Jesus. And now we see Mary with the confidence that Jesus um, would have no need of these spices. See, Jesus has been teaching his disciples, he's been telling his disciples he must die. He's going to die. Um, and so we saw that the other, the other day. Uh, as Jesus explained, except a kernel uh, of wheat fall and die, it can do nothing. There's, there's nothing produced by it. It's just dead. Uh, but it has to die first in order for there to be new life. And so we see this, this, explain, this teaching. The disciples, for the most part, didn't really understand what Jesus was talking about, uh, especially after this triumphal entry. And now they're really excited about what is to come because, hey, I'm with him. We've been doing this teaching and, and ministering to all of these people for a few years now, and now everything is really starting to uh, to work together and work out how we think it should. And they have absolutely no idea uh, what is about to take place, and it's going to surprise them. It's going to shock them. But Mary and Martha... They understood. Mary understood in the previous chapter. Um, or excuse me, Martha understood in the previous chapter as she asked Jesus about raising Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus said, yes, no, he's going to live again. She said, yes, I know at the resurrection in the last day. And she had that kind of confidence. And now we see Mary, her sister, Mary now with the confidence to know Jesus has been talking about dying, but Jesus isn't going to need these ointments and these spices after his death. She knew, she had the confidence to know that Jesus would have no need of these in death because he's not going to stay dead very long. He is life. He is life. So there's some things that uh, that take place in this passage um, that we should that we should look at regarding the heart of Mary. She she shows this outward affection for Jesus and how it's received and how it's perceived by by everybody else. All right. First thing that that I notice in this passage is that she made a decision and she decided that Jesus was worthy. She decided that Jesus was worthy. In verse number three, she took the pound of ointment of spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And then the whole house was filled with the odor of the ointment. This is something that was very, very expensive, extremely expensive. And it was being saved for a very special occasion. Well, let's be honest, it was no longer needed for Lazarus. Lazarus didn't need it, and uh, and now it's able to be used however she saw fit, whatever it was. This is uh, this is something that she takes she takes great care in uh, in doing. If you would notice, this is the equivalent of a year's worth of salary. Now this is expensive. This is very expensive. The average, the average, um, excuse me, not average, the median income in the United States right now, annual income, median annual income in the United States right now, is $63,000 a year. $63,000 a year. It's estimated that this is worth a year's salary. When's the last time you gave something expensive 
for God. No, I I don't mean to the church. I mean for God. It was something for him. It was very expensive. When was the last time you gave Jesus something expensive? A a great physical possession, an, an amount of wealth. This is more than just tithing that we're talking about. Because tithing is what's expected. Tithing is commanded. We're, we're commanded, give 10%. Give, give that little bit. But when's the last time you went above that? When's the last time you went beyond that? When's the last time you really decided and determined, I am going to do something special for Jesus? Say, well, how can I do that? He's not here with us anymore. How can I give him something special? Well, when's the last time you even tried? When's the last time you did anything for God? When was the last time you decided that you're going to do something just special for him? She's already taken the time to meet with Jesus. She's already set aside the time to have this feast to make this an important thing that she's going to meet with Jesus. And then she's going to give him something very, very expensive. Now make no mistake about it. This decision that she made was not a popular decision. There were people there who viewed this as a waste. I mean, look at verse number five. Now we know this is Judas, but you know that there were probably other people thinking, what is she doing? This is so expensive. Why is she wasting this? Why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 pence? What a waste. Now, Judas was kind of the spokesperson for this group of, for anyone who thought that this was wasteful for her to spend this on Jesus' feet. So you got to consider the source here, right? Oh, there, was, there was definitely some benefit for Judas if this sells for 300 pence. This thing sells for 300 pence. He tells Jesus, yeah, the best thing we could get for it was 200. And then he he keeps the rest for himself. Or the Bible here, John says he's a thief. He didn't want this to give to the poor. He wanted it for himself. There's some benefit here for him helping the poor. Now, I'll be honest with you, in this day and age, in this society we live in, the same thing is true. The, I don't give to the nonprofit organizations, and they use that title to, uh, to lure people in, to be honest. We're a nonprofit organization, but they have so, much, they have so many administrative fees that hardly any of, of what's donated actually goes to the need. It's a nonprofit organization that feeds the profit, uh, that, that feeds their organization, feeds the profit, feeds their organization. So we don't just we don't just give to any charity. And please be wise in how you are giving. Some of the charities that we give to, some of them give less than ten percent to the cause that they're that they say that they're trying to help. But your decision to give something, to give anything to Jesus. Boy, that's not going to be popular. That is not going to be popular. Even your saved family and friends, they're going to look down on you for that. You'll be discouraged from doing whatever it is that God's telling you to do. And I've had people come and they've shared that with me. God's just laid this on my heart. God's just burdened me for this. And I want you to have this. I want the church to have this. I just want this to be used for God. That's not a popular choice. It's not a popular decision. Don't be discouraged in it, though. You do what God has for you to do, because God will take care of her. Now, I want us to find Mark chapter number 14, because Mark tells us, Mark gives us a couple other, uh, a couple other insights for this. And uh, when we look at verses 6 through 9, well, well let's pick up here. Uh, verse number 4, he says, there are some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste made? Uh, why was this waste of the ointment made? Verse 5, for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have given to the poor, and they murmured against her. They, this is plural, this is more than one. They murmured against her. And Jesus said, 
Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do good to them, but me ye have not always. Again, the disciples didn't understand this, but she knew. She knew exactly what he was talking about. Verse 8, she hath done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, who, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. So first of all, Jesus defends her actions. Jesus defends those who are doing the work for him. Can I encourage you? Leave God's workers alone. If somebody's doing something for God, leave them alone. Let them stay busy in God's work. We have no business uh, putting them down, looking bad. Just let them keep going for God. Maybe you don't have the courage to give like somebody else gives. Don't put them down for giving. Just do what you can. Maybe you won't give up on things. Maybe you won't give up the things necessary to be a worker or a teacher in a class. Maybe you value your family time more than you value your God time. No matter what your sad state might be, leave those who are doing the work of God, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Maybe God's not even called you to do any of those things. It, do, it doesn't really matter. It certainly doesn't matter to me. God, I don't judge you for those things, but leave those who are doing those things, leave them alone. Now, no doubt, there's some people who think, man, I, I don't understand this bus ministry stuff. You guys are crazy. You guys, you, know, you get up early, you just stay late, you, you're, you're not even getting home by a decent hour. What, what are you guys doing? Leave them alone about it. Let them stay busy for God. Now listen, no matter what your excuse is, doesn't come close to, to doing something for God. If you have nothing to give, it's easier to give. Think about this. If you have nothing to give, it's easier to give sacrificially because everything is a sacrifice. Every time you give, it's a sacrifice. And there are people in our church who give sacrificially every single week. We don't have much, but they give. Those things that we do give up to, to work for the Lord, those things aren't missed. Those things are gladly set free so that so they free up our, our lives, they free up our time, they free up our lives so that we can do more for God. Your family time will mean a lot more when God is the center of your family time. Now, I like here what, what Jesus says of her. Jesus says here in verse number eight, she hath done what she could. Mary did all she could do for Jesus that day. She did all that she could for Jesus that day. Can the same be said of you? Is the same thing true of you? Or is there something lacking? Is there something that you're missing? Are you holding on to, are you holding something back from God today? I'd be interested to see, I mean, just thinking of me in my life, I know every single day, I, I, I probably can't say that every single day. That every single day, but that's my desire. I want every single day to rest my head at night and say, I've done everything for God that I possibly could do today. Everything that I could do. Let's look at the impact of this. Verse number nine. Mary is remembered everywhere the gospel is preached. Mary is known. The one woman talked about everywhere and taught about everywhere. Listen, I don't, that's a strong statement, I, and I love that statement. Jesus records this for us in the in the pages of Scripture so that she would be known. But I, I wonder what will your impact be on the world around you? What will your impact be on the world around you? Mary's actions had an impact on the on the people around her, and certainly on Jesus. She's heard everywhere. But look, Mary's this same thing had a this this same account, the same instance, the same act 
had an impact on the hard-hearted as well. Truth is, this is kind of the last straw for Judas. He goes out, and be, because of this instrument, this this account, because of this uh, this situation right here, this circumstance right here, Judas goes out and determines he's going to betray Jesus. Now, the the, the well, we'll learn a little bit more about this, Lord willing, tomorrow. But as Judas goes out, the scribes and Pharisees, the, the, the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin, these guys, they have no idea where to find Jesus next. And certainly they think, well, for Passover, he's going to be here. He's going to be in Jerusalem for Passover. He's going to be here. Was he going to come back to the temple? I don't know. He's not here today. And so word gets out that they're looking for him. And, uh, and they want to know where to find him. Where is he going to be? Where is he going to celebrate Passover? Where is he going to observe Passover? And Judas, no doubt, hears about this. And, uh, and then he goes out and determines that he's going to betray Jesus this way. Why? Because he's a selfish thief. And he just wants, he just wants to get more and and if he has to if he has to betray God if he has to Jesus if he has to turn his back on Jesus to do it he'll get it he'll get more that's how selfish he is this is the last straw for him don't allow those who are hard hearted to discourage you from work, for the work of from the work of God don't dis, don't be discouraged in your work for God today you continue on. You be a blessing and a help to someone around you. You might be surprised what God does for your life. God, what God does through your life. What God does to your life. As we finish this, this, uh, this lesson here tonight, what, what have you done for Jesus recently? What have you done for him? What are you willing to give up for him? What are you willing to say? You know what? This is expensive. This is valuable. This is important to me. But God, you can have it. Would you take seriously your relationship with God today? Mary's taking this very, very seriously. In fact, she's taking it so seriously, she's kind of putting her money where her mouth is. Saying, because God, my relationship with Jesus, so, so very important. Jesus isn't going to need these things. I only give them to him now. It's very expensive. But what are you willing to do for God? What are you willing to do for the Lord Jesus today? Would you do it? What's God laid on your heart that you're not willing to do? It'd be a blessing to help somebody else? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Mary understood the full heaviness that's on Jesus on this day. But I know she understood more than the majority, more than what the disciples understood. She understood what Jesus was talking about as he geared up toward the Passover in these final days of his ministry here on earth. What, have you, what are you doing for God? What are you doing for the work of Christ, for the cause of Christ? Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord, for this example that you've set before us in Scripture. We thank you, Lord, that you that you do continue to challenge us. Oh, Lord, I pray that we take the challenge. That we take it seriously. That we'd apply your word to our hearts and lives. And that we would make some real sacrifices so that we can say... We've done everything that we can for Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would help us to endeavor to continue on in, in what you've called us to do. That we would maintain our, our relationship with you. That we'd draw closer to you. That we'd love you with all of our heart, with everything that we have. Lord, we pray today that you would keep us healthy, keep us safe, keep us well. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day.